My name is Tamar Berlanda, I'm an architect. I'm the co-founder of ASA Studio based in Kigali, Rwanda. ASA Studio, which literally stands for Active Social Architecture, is a collaborative practice that was established by the fact that we had work to do. And um, an NGO called Plan Rwanda, they wanted to try and, and really prototype a new model of early childhood development center. If you enable a child from a very young age to be in a healthy, safe and uh, secure environment, he or she will stand a much better chance 20 years down the line to have a successful career through university to higher education in life. And so I think that it brings really full circle a, a range of um, things which I've been interested in about, like how architecture as a discipline needs to practice and operate for everybody and just good design should not be a privilege. And the second thing that if you're invested in higher education within the disciplines of the built environment, you then also need to make sure you have good students because without good students then everything is hard. But in order to create good students, you need to make sure that early on in life they had chances because it's too late to recriminate that, ah, you've come from a bad school when kids are 20, 21 years old. We've went through a large-scale construction process in the last uh, 12 months which allowed us to build roughly 20, 21 buildings. Mostly early child development centers, a couple, five pre, six pre-primary schools and a couple of uh, maternity wards. One thing which we felt strongly about, and this was based also on an assessment of what had been carried out in the country beforehand, was that uh, a lot of school construction is based on the idea that the classroom is the only module that needs to be replicated. So there's no site planning, it's just endless repetition of classrooms. And so we decided to come up with a modular structure that by means of its geometry carries itself the DNA of its aggregation and so that hopefully it determines a little bit how the site plan is going to be generated and with a couple of mirrored elements it deploys itself into one or two basic configurations. Historically the predominant model of construction particularly for large-scale projects has been to have a reinforced concrete frame with some infill of sorts and an iron metal sheeting. Now that's all good, I mean I think it does uh, allow for addressing a number of issues and particularly saying earthquake prone zones like Rwanda in response to the needs. But we started thinking how can we take the concrete element away? Maybe the steel uh, reinforcement is hard but the concrete columns, maybe it's possible. And so we started to develop a reinforced masonry structure. We would use local fired bricks that one could buy from communities nearby. And by uh, embedding steel reinforcement bars every so often, create sort of a frame that would also respond to like earthquake movements. And we're talking about single story structures and so not very complicated. And, uh, but then for the roofing again, we tried to use clay tiles because we said, look, there's a lot of clay, it's possible to fire them, mold and fire them locally and rather than importing iron sheets. I mean, I think that it's a matter of finding a break even because if you have sheets, the roof structure can be lighter, the slope can be less, you build less wall, vice versa, if you use the tiles, you need more structure, more wall, more, more slope. It's a balance, I mean it really depends and, and in that sense we're, we're hoping that the template that we leave as a legacy in terms of drafting national standards and guidelines is something that is open to interpretation for a little bit, at least of those things. This notion of architecture for emergency, this architecture for uh, doing good or this architecture pro bono, quote unquote, it's, it's really almost irrelevant. I mean, first, it should be sustainable business for everybody, and it's just a matter of where your fees are relatively to what is available. And second, that designing for a refugee camp should be as normal as the designing of any high-rise tower in any school and in any practice in the world. And it's not just this niche that then you need to carve out and start branding with, uh, with logos. So I think those are preoccupations that we try to address not directly but indirectly with our work.